Hi, and hello there, it's me, Xenom, again, and I'm in a lab coat today, and uh, why? Uh, you will see later, but uh, today's topic is, of course, Bloodlines 2, because there is a Bloodlines 2 uh, related video, and uh, half an hour ago, uh, Death Diary 16, Camarilla Court dropped. And we will read it and analyze it. And I will rate the new characters they have shown because there is a new Tremere. It's not Elif, sadly. And I am devastated by that fact. But uh, let's not uh, rob the new Tremere of her chance at success. And let's uh, start reading. Death Diary 16, Camarilla Court, like I said. The team at the Chinese room has been hard at work and we're excited to show you the cast of our Camarilla kindred this week. So, members of Camarilla in Seattle. Yeah. Mm. Seattle has been dominated by the Camarilla for a century, so that's a long time, not a long time for a kindred, but still. It is an organization of vampires that has fingers in many aspects of mortal society to keep power. The Camarilla court is under the leadership of a prince who dictates the laws maintaining the masquerade. Under the prince, there are several official positions, such as Premogen, who represent major clans, and a sheriff to enforce Camarilla law. Each has a place in the nightly affairs of Seattle. Yeah. So, that's basic stuff, the explanation of what Camarilla is. But let's continue. Exploring the city will introduce you to this kindred and you'll have the opportunity to talk and learn about them in their preferred surroundings. Fire's relationship with each can develop as you spend more time with them. Depending on how you play the game of vampire politics with them, they may grow to adore or abhor you. Makes sense, that's how vampires work. In this diary, we're sharing some profiles of the kindred in the Seattle Scamorilla, provided by writer Cherish Goldstraw and narrative director Ian Thomas, as if someone were describing them to you in universe. Okay. Yeah, so from the perspective of someone in the game. This is the structure of the Camarilla, as you'll, you'll learn about it at the start of the story. Okay. Uh, in previous diaries, you might have met some characters who are also part of the Camarilla and hold, hold titles in it. Fletcher, so the vengeful guy, the master of Elysium, so the keeper of Elysium, Nico, the Banu Hakim Primogen, the guy with a lot of piercings, Simon Silky Ladok, so the Bruja Bold guy, so he's a Bruja Primogen, so I, I've i called it, maybe he looks like a typical old punk, but maybe, maybe a little punk, but you, you know what I'm saying, a typical old Bruja, but he is in fact a Camarilla Primogen, and Mir Storms, the Tremir Magister. Oh yeah, she's a Magister, so we haven't met the Primogen yet. I mean, Magisters can be Primogen, like I said in the Tremere video, but we'll see where this goes. Uh, they all can be found living in Seattle too. You can find them in their respective death diaries. So we have uh, Fletcher for Ventru, Nico for Banu, uh, Silky for Bruja, and Mare Storms for Tremere. But now let's jump to the new faces. Some, known, some don't uh, 
I'm blocking some of the picture of my face. Eh, that's a bit of it. If you want to see the full picture, you have to read the diary yourself. So yeah. Uh, Ventru Prince J.J. J. Campbell. Quote. I know I see the smile that does not reach your eyes. I see the brow that furrows the dawn of panic. I see the tension in your shoulders, the hands that clench. Oh yeah, yes, I know. Why should my next word not end you? I doubt uh, he will say it to fire since, well, fire is most likely like ages older than him, but we'll see. Description. Campbell is power personified. All right. As the last century grew, he consolidated the kindred's hold on the streets. As the city rose, so did Weaver Tower and the court, with tendrils into politics, businesses, society, and the underworld. Not, not the movie, but, you know, things that shady guys do in the back alley, etc. Uh, once Lowe's protege, it is now Campbell, urbane, perceptive, commanding, who will settle into the future as prince of the city. So we uh, saw that guy. No, we have we haven't saw him, but his I think his design at least is based on the uh, Prince Alec Cross from the original uh, version of Bloodlines to the Harrison Lab version. He appeared in the trailers. Yeah, he's at least by design based on him. He's also a prince, so that makes sense. Well, we'll see how it goes. Uh, of course, it's kind of predictable that Venture is a prince, but, well. Uh, but the thing about being Lowe's protege, I always thought Lowe was a Toreador, judging by her appearance. Of course, Venture can, can also be beautiful and astonishing, not m as much as Tremere, but still. Uh, and talking about Lou, well, she's next. We can see her here in her full glory. I'm not blocking her, I'm blocking the text, but I will be scrolling. So we are Lois Ventru. Not a Toreador, so I was wrong. And she's an ex-prince of the city. Lou Graham. What? Oh, this is ridiculous. Something must be done. I know it's... It is quite the fashion to hear a wide range of opinions, but blood under the nails is such a nuisance. She even sounds like a Toreador. I mean, that's my voice, but her quote is like a Toreador. Come on. She's a Toreador through and through, and yet, I mean, there is this saying that a good venture is indistinguishable from a Toreador, but. Yeah, I guess she took that to, to her unbeaten heart. Description. Uh, of course, we already know some things about Lou, but let's, let's read it anyway. In life, Lou Graham pulled all the strings of the elite in Seattle. She had the ears of politicians, criminals, blue bloods and commoners alike. In our life, she has spent more than a century deepening that hold. She looms over Cyril as a storm cloud, a constant factor in the choices of even the most powerful kindred, despite her absence from day to day or rather night to night politics. A too bad mouth Lou Graham is to bad mouth the city, and this city has a habit of Barring its foes down deep. So, obviously, Lo has be been with us for a long time, since the first version of Bloodlines 2. And she's back. 
Of, of course, of course, she's back. She was in the first uh, Chinese room uh, trailer for Bloodlines 2. That's there you have it. I, my opinion about her haven't changed. She's still a torridor in my eyes, and that won't change even if the re reality is different. She's great. I love her. Let's continue. And another one. Ye. Another one. Another venture. Come on. Venture, venture, venture. Too, too, too many venture. Too, too much. That's too, too much blue blood. Someone needs to drink that blood, and that person will not be me because diablery is prohibited in Camarilla. If not, you know, accidents happen. A rogue gargoyle might, you know, this. Enter frenzy for no apparent reason and fly into the prince's office and diablerize or destroy him. Then, you know, accidents happen. That's, you know, hypothetical scenario, but still. Ventral Sinchano. Okay. Ryong Choi. So she's not a Kuei Jin. Not a Kuei Jin because there are no Kuei Jin in B5. Or maybe there are, but yeah, Ryong. She looks great. We saw her in the reveal trailer for Bloodlines 2, the Chinese room version. And she still looks as amazing. Amazing. Quote I am not sure you grasp the situation. You will act in this as my agent. And in retur return, you will gain both the benefits and responsibilities of that. It is not negotiable. You could, of course, refuse, but the sun is rising. So, a typical venture, of course. If ventures are venturing. Description Ryong is of a new breed, a deal maker, modern, efficient, and pragmatic, with a city under threat and with the masquerade in tatters. Ryong is the calm center of the chaos, negotiating, outmaneuvering, and doing everything that must be done to maintain stability. She is not afraid to cut away that flesh if it will help save the whole. So, of course, another venture. Uh, I like her. She will be backstabbing, I think. Very, very backstabbing, as Venture uh, are very often backstabbing. But she looks, looks backstabbing and sounds also. You know, like, I'm sure we both can profit from it. And then she pulls pulls out a blowtorch or orders someone to do it. But we'll see how, how she turn, will turn out. If Design wise, I really like her. She looks very professional, very businesswoman kind of thing. And I'm into it. All right. And here we have our uh, favorite uh, sewer rat, Nosferatu. He he's a hair rat. All right. <laughs> That's interesting. Michael or Mikhail? Michael. Tolly Tolliver. So, the beautiful Nosferatu we all know and love from the first version of Bloodlines 2. Quote, Hey, it's the festive season. I'm just out for a stroll. I figure I bring joy to the world. And this little chat is courtesy of my selfless desire to entertain the elderly. So listen up, Nomad. Oh, he, he's, he's great. I, I, I admire him. I love him. Oh, Tolly, you're amazing. You're so funny. He sounds like a good fellow, maybe in a manipulative type of good fellow. Yeah, but yeah, still good. Design wines, he didn't change. He's still the same good old Nosferatu. Description. Let's see. Most Nosferatu will hide themselves away from the world, but Tolly knows how little attention today's mortals really pay to anything. The gregarious and gleeful intelligencer will be found where he's least expected, always 
spinning webs for the court, nudging this, gathering compromising information on that. Totally knows where the bodies are buried and has probably dug them up, critiqued their dress sense and had a long and very pointed conversation with them about their stupid indiscretions. He looks and sounds like a really good guy. I I I, I, I like him very much. I, yeah, 10 out of 10, Nosferatu. Here's an interesting specimen. Bruja Sheriff, so most likely a sheriff that we will eliminate at the start of the game to take his position. Bruja Sheriff Benny Muldoon. Benny Muldoon. Quote, you have one night, one night to sort your business and get the F out of civil. After that, it's open season. I'm starting to wonder. Uh, obviously, this quote from uh, Tolly was addressed to Fire because he referred to us as Nomad, one of the Fire's titles or nicknames. And if all of them are talking like that to Fire, someone centuries older than them combined, most likely. Then well, no, no wonder they will. No wonder this guy will die at the start, most likely. Yeah, I don't like you. He will die by my hand. Yeah, I will boil your blood. Uh, description: Benny is the attack dog of the court, the enforcer, the bruiser, the bone breaker. You want him leashed up and snarling at your enemies, not biting at your heels, so get on his good side. No. Uh, he despises those who he sees as lesser bloodlines and prides himself on his ability to sniff out those who are working against Seattle's best interests. Okay? If you're lucky, you'll find him standing at the prince's side. If you're less lucky, you, you'll encounter him elsewhere. Sees us lesser bloodlines? How, what do you mean, bruh? What do you mean by lesser bloodlines? I will show you a lesser bloodline by boiling your blood and it will come out of your eyeballs and ears and nostrils and mouth and then you will beg me to stop but I will won't, I won't stop you will suffer uh, uh, so yeah I like not liking him he seems like a good character in a design sense yeah, of course his model design is cool uh, he looks very brutish a very like a professional mafia uh, guy that is sent to clean up stuff like in John Wick but his ca character is made in a, such a good way I think from this description that I would love to hate him yeah that and now the moment we all been waiting for the new Tremere arrival at our doorstep of this century Dum dum dum. <laughs> now you know why I'm wearing this lab coat. A Tremere researcher, Safia Ulusoy. She's pretty. Not Elif Tian pretty, but still not bad. Quote That's fascinating. Ah, you wouldn't mind if I take a closer look? 14th century, I'm almost sure. Then look at these markings, hermetic in nature, obviously. Could you just let me... Oops, sorry, I'll clean that up. She gives me... A scientist vibes from... I don't remember the name of the movie, but... You know, wants to examine everything, sees something interesting and immediately goes to that living whatever she was working on before so that's the feeling i'm getting from her 
Uh, but let's uh, read her description. Safia is the eager enthusiast, her attention caught by furious facts and the fascination of learning from both the old and the new. If the court has questions, she is the one to find answers. Her skill with taumaturgy or blood sorcery and her dogged research techniques have proven her worth to Seattle. No matter the current, current standing of her clan, recently she's been investigating the city's growing pin blood population, a particular concern to the court. However, her focu focus does tend to distract her from the more mundane world. You'll probably find her in her lab or lost in a pile of books at the Wake the Dead coffee bar. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but uh, I think that's the same coffee bar that Miss Thorns is residing at most of her time from her description. Uh, but yeah, I like her character. She seems a little crazy, a typical obsessed researcher. Uh, we'll see, we'll see, but yeah, uh, she's the reason why I'm wearing this uh, lab coat. Yes, this is actual lab coat, because I'm a Shamir. Uh, and yeah, she's not Elif, but for now, until Elif is teased or revealed, she will do. Because Elif will be revealed. Right? Right, guys? Right. But yeah, uh, Safia is keep I like her. And now this one. Finally, Toridor. Uh, yeah. Toridor Primogen Isabella Moore. More. More. Uh, Isabella. And so she's the character that uh, Fire was referring to in the gameplay reveal that. Uh, use the mark on Fire's hand to sap her power. So she's the one, so she probably has some mm, thaumaturgical or other blood sorcerer stunts. Yeah, Design-wise, she looks interesting, for sure, like a very extravagant torridor, a model, perhaps. Quote, the delicate brutality to pursue one special idea. All art is violence without the right canvas. Yeah, you sound like a typical tourist. Uh, description. Isabella, queen of the nightlife, stalks her way through Seattle society as trendsetter, bon vivant nightclub diva and performance artist extraordinaire. Her legendary events at the H. Atrium nightclub. Okay. All right. Uh, okay. Let's let's stop right here for a second. Atrium nightclub. Atrium is a place, a nightclub, where Elif resides. It's it's Elif's nightclub. In the old uh, Bloodlines 2 version from the Hearts of Labs. I'm not saying that Elif will be in the game, but this points to the fact that she will most likely. So I'm excited for that. At the Atrium nightclub, thrill and shock, the mortal mortals flock to be part of her world. There are some in the court who believe she frets perilously close to the edge of the masquerade. Isabel wields her art like a weapon. To her, self-expression is more important than any stricture. So she seems like a very bossy Toreador. Like I'm right, even if you're right, you're wrong, because I said so. And now get out of my sight. Sis. So a little venturish, but still in torrid or manner, very egocentric, so to say. 
at least that's the vibe I'm getting out of her here. Um, one more thing about the models is here, 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 and here. They look great. The models look amazing, really. But yeah. Uh, Isabel, uh, I'm, I hope she doesn't run at you. And that Elif does. So yeah. And now the everyone's uh, favorites. Uh, Bombastic Nosferatu Secret Keeper William Axel Quote You don't understand, Nomad. If I took away their little black book, all their secrets, what would they have left? Okay, so I'm guessing there is a way to make him not blow himself up uh, at his level because we saw him in the gameplay reveal he was like the boss of the level and at the end he initiated the auto distract sequence let's call it like that so my film is not taken video is not taken down uh, so maybe he survived or there is a way to save him or not, or not, mm. but I like him. Uh, description. William is the prince's archivist, keeping a century of secrets safe from the prying eyes of mortals and kindred alike. He's long ago hidden himself away from Seattle society, unwilling to show his face on the streets, but maintains his contacts among the kindred and the court, in the underworld of the city. Willem is never one to put himself forward or voice his opinion and this might lead others to overlook him or take him for granted. So he's a good Nosferatu. Uh, but he has the traits, transgressions and depths are at his fingertips and such knowledge can be used as a knife. So he's a very good Nosferatu, and judging by his appearance, he's of a lower generation than Tolly, because Tolly is like hunchback from the Notre Dame, and Willem is more monstrous, so yeah. I like Willem, I liked him in the gameplay reveal, and I like him here. He sounds like a very, very good Nosferatu, good at his job, good at being himself. Uh, and from what we saw of him in the gameplay reveal, he has a deep story to tell. His family, what happened here, what happened there, who's manipulating him, even if someone is manip manipulating him, who knows. But yeah, now let's, uh, because it's, well, it's the end, that's not all. Uh, very good deep diary, but now let's rate everyone from a scale 9 to 10 uh, on how much I like them and other scale how much I like their design. So yeah, JJ Campbell, uh, how much I like your being, uh, I say like 6. You seem intriguing, but you know, you're just a venture prince, so yeah. Uh, how much I like your design? Seven, solid, another typical venture, but good, fits him. Uh, Luke Graham, how much I like you character-wise? Eight, because yes, and design. Nine point five, let's say, because she is not Elif. That's the reason, yeah. Ryong, uh, character-wise, uh, also 7, and 9 for your design, yeah. Uh, 10 out of 10, 10 out of 10, uh, yes, uh, for Tolly, of course. Benny, I don't like you because I hate you, I like not liking you, so uh, 8 for 
character because uh, you compelled me to not like you from the moment I saw your face and read about you. So good job for uh, for that. So eight. And design wise, I said like seven or six, six point six point five. Yes, that's the final verdict. Because she he looks fine, I guess. Typical bruja mobster. Kind of reminds me of the Putanesca uh, family of the Giovanni for some reason, but yeah. Safina, character 9, design also 9, yeah. Uh, Isabella, you're, you're intriguing me. I hope you're not using presents on me right now. Uh, 8 for character and 8 for design. I'm not a fan of designer clothes, this much designer, of course, uh, from, yeah, maybe she will change that maybe will change my opinion, but in Willem character 10 and design 8. He looks fine, like a good Nosferatu in the suit. So yeah, we met some of the kindred of the court of Seattle, of, under the Prince J.J. Campbell, I will call him J. General Jameson from now on, because yes, uh, I said that and now it's official, so J.J. Yeah, J.J. the Prince, Low, Young, Tolly, Benny, Safia, Isabel and Willem. Of course, most likely there will be more kindred in the court of course there will be more it's an RPG game so yeah uh, and yeah I really like this game very very interesting very insightful uh, and uh, atrium 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 elif 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 I'm chanting come on I, I already told you guys in the last uh, video I will do this blood sorcerer's ritual to bring her to existence so yeah, but uh, we're getting there. Atrium, let's go. So, yeah, two weeks from now, uh, Anark Death Diary will drop. So, some Anark kindred will be revealed. Perhaps Elif is an Anark, maybe. Yeah. We'll see. See ya then. Bye bye.